Hello everyone and welcome to another mini sky tonight. So I had a viewer present to me something interesting that they saw on Good Morning America and they were curious of what my thoughts were. And after doing some research, I came across something that was really interesting and somewhat disturbing in my opinion. And this is what I'm talking about. There was an article in the New York Post that talked about the new trend of parents raising their kids by their astrological signs and how this is such a big thing for proper parenting and how to best interact with your kids. And it kind of struck a nerve with me because the idea of astrology. So let's kind of dive into some of the history behind astrology, why it's considered a pseudoscience and why you may not want to follow this trend. So let's dive into it. So what is astrology? Astrology is basically your sun sign. Basically the sun as it's going through its path through the sky over the course of the year follows a path known as the ecliptic line. And that ecliptic line crosses several different constellations. So whatever date you were born, the sun was in a certain constellation and that is considered your zodiac or your astrological sign, depending upon when you were born. And the study of astrology as it is today is the position of the celestial objects at the moment of your birth and how they can be used to determine your personality, your traits, your temperate, temperament and so forth. Basically, it's like how, you de how it determines you. Well, in a way it kind of makes sense, but in another it doesn't. So how does it fit historically. Let's look at the history of it and how it became such a big thing even to this day. So the history of astrology is basically everybody ever since the dawn of creation has looked up to the stars for inspiration. Whether it's basically putting tales of death, danger, endless love in the stars and allowing people to have their own imaginations, their own stories. And it was astrology that was basically the first version of astronomy. Astrology comes from the Greek word astrologia, which means study of the stars. So it was basically the first astronomy in a way. But then it started to take on a new light, especially during the Babylonian times, where they believed that the gods and goddesses lived up in the heavens and how the stars portrayed certain events meant certain things would happen in your life because that's how the gods portrayed it. And every culture has their version of astrology in a way like how the stars portray certain events happening from Egypt to India to is the Islam territories, China, Maya, Inca, and almost every different culture has a version of astrology. But the one we associate with here in America is the Greek and Roman version where we use all the Greek and Roman constellations. In fact, the image to your left is some of the oldest recordings of astrology. This was kind of found in the Mesopotamia area where it was basically depicted of 32 tablets of ivory showing different zodiacal signs. So it's been around for quite a while. So what are why is it coming into modern examples? I mean, we have the, the funky song from the 1970s, the dawn of the age of Aquarius. Even the White House has had their personal astrologers. You look in your daily mag, uh, newspaper and magazines, you get your daily horoscopes. And I know back just a few years ago, there was the, oh, Mercury is in retrograde meme. So therefore I'm in a miserable mess because of that. So blaming putting your fate and destiny in the stars and saying, oh, my life is like this because of what's going on in the sky. So does this study of astrology have some scientific backing? Because this idea that the stars affect your life in some way has existed for thousands of years. So does this have a foot to stand on? So is there any physical influence to astrology because they said that the celestial bodies affect a person. Well, could it be gravitational? Could it be tidal? 
could be some form of that nature to where those different forces add a, add a little bit of an effect to a person's life and that little bit could affect their lives. Well, let's crunch the numbers. So Earth, it's, I use an example of like a healthy five foot person that's a roughly about 132 pounds. A average person, give or take. And for the average person that's roughly about 132 pounds, the Earth exerts 132 pounds of force on that person. Okay, so the Earth does play a bit of effect. But the tidal forces, so tidal forces is basically the force that is exerted between the two bodies. The tidal forces between you and the Earth is very minimal. And for a friend that's one foot away, about the same weight and height, the gravitational force between the two of you is exceptionally marginal, like 10 to the negative ninth. What I mean by negative ninth, I mean like 0 0.98 zeros and then the number six. So nine decimal places beyond zero. So that means it's very, 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 very tiny influence. And as you look at all these different other celestial bodies like the sun, Jupiter, Mars, and everything, they even have less tidal force and less gravitational pull than say, for example, your own pillow. The pillow that's on your bed that you lay your head on at night has more gravitational influence on you than the other celestial bodies. So it cannot necessarily be a physical thing. But we also have the problem of precession because the sky changes over the course of thousands of years. Now keep in mind, astrology has been around for thousands of years. So we're talking ancient Babylonian times. Well, precession is the process to where the Earth's pole wobbles over the course of thousands of years. So that means the positions of the planets and moon and sun will change over the course of thousands of years as well as how the sky looks. So with that into an idea, NASA was able to do some calculations and they realized the astrological dates have changed over the course of time because of basically of the position of the moon and the sun and the stars with the idea of precession, the astrological signs have changed and that technically there are 13 zodiacal signs. And also the average dates for these different zodiacal signs have changed as well. So that means you may have a different zodiacal sign. And when I'm talking about 13 zodiacal signs, again, a sun sign or a zodiacal sign is by definition, the constellation that the sun crosses. And here is basically kind of like a state view map of the sky. So this is the boundaries of the different constellations. So if you were to basically take the sky, instead of having the beautiful dot to dot constellations, you have basically a state border constellation in a way. And these are the borders of the different constellations. And if you will notice right next to Scorpius and Sagittarius to the bottom left, the sun crosses in a constellation known as Ophiuchus. So there's 13 zodiacal signs technically, not 12. So that kind of throws off a lot of calculations. And to make matters worse, even the astrologers have blamed NASA for creating this odd calculation in their tablets. And they've rebuttaled saying, we didn't create it. It's been there for thousands of years. We just calculated the math to show that, hey, you also have to include this constellation as well if you want to include astrology. So this is technicalities. I mean, things can be reworked and everything. So how about hard science? In order to consider astrology a hard science, you have to have it to be repeatable, irrefutable, that their predictions can be repeated over and over again. But here's the problem. You have different schools of astrology, which sometimes conflict with one another. And I know like one of the fun things I did as an experiment back in college is that I looked up horoscopes in four different newspapers online and each horoscope was different. So 
why all the discrepancy? Shouldn't it all be the same? Well, back in 1985, Sean Carson got the same idea. He got tired of basically saying that, oh, these astrologers are irrefutable and that they're actually doing science. He said, okay, let's do a scientific experiment. Let's do a double blind test and to see if your predictions and your matching of personality types actually works. So they contacted 30 astrologers from different reputations across Europe and America. And these 30 astrologers were considered the top tier of their professions and from their different colleagues. Like they validated one another. They weren't just your Joe Schmo off the street. Like these were highly refutable astrologers. And they brought in a test group of about 116 different subjects, 116 different people to be random test subjects. And they took the California personality inventory. Basically, it's a series of several hundred questions to where they describe themselves in a personality type, whether they're, they lean more masculine, more feminine, whether they're more dominant or docile, and so on. So basically, it's a very good descriptive of the person given the time. And so they took these 116 subjects and said, okay, let's do a double blind test. We'll have the subjects try to guess and we'll also have the astrologers try to guess. And so they took the birth chart traits from the astrologers from the National Council of Geoseismic Research and their astrologers saying, if you're born on a certain date, these are the types of personality traits you're gonna have. And they also took a chart from a random person from the CPI test they took. So the way the test was run is that each person was given three personality profiles and they had to match the profile with a person's birth chart. So that they're given these three personality profiles and saying, oh, given these personality profiles of person X, Y, and Z, person X matches this chart. And so they try to match it up. And they did this for all 116 subjects. And given the three personality profiles, only one answer was correct. And what I mean by that is, is that they're given a birth chart saying, okay, you're gonna look for a Scorpio in these three different personality charts. Which one do you think is a Scorpio? And they place the Scorpio. And they did this comparison for all 116 subjects. So out of the test subjects that did this blindly, with no experience, with no expertise whatsoever, when they try to guess, okay, this person matches this personality type, and they did that for all 116, they were 33% accuracy, had a 33.7% accuracy, a one-third guess. That's less than a flip of a coin top type of guessing. And the astrologers were no better. They had a 34% accuracy. That should say something. That means that the astrologers were basically randomly guessing personality traits and types. And these are supposed to be people that recognize different personality traits and types given based upon a sun sign. So that should say something that, do they have any refutable evidence whatsoever? And also as a random question to think about it, I don't know of any astrologer that is a multimillionaire. I don't know of any astrologer that has made it big and made huge impacts in the world. Very few have. That should, some, that should give you something. Ultimately, keep in mind, it's just random guessing. And it's, yes, I know a lot of people depend upon their horoscope, but keep in mind, it's something fun. So a final takeaway. Take it with a grain of salt. Think of it kind of like a fortune cookie. Everybody gets a fortune cookie from their favorite Asian restaurant and they open it up and says, oh, my fortune is this. Well, it may or may, may not necessarily be true. And especially since a lot of fortune cookie fortunes are very vague and can apply to almost anything, the same thing can be applied with a lot of horoscope readings. They're kind of vague and they can apply to anything or anybody. And 
from what I gather from a lot of astrologers that I did a research on, so many of them were psychologists. So that maybe that many people are looking for astrologers because they're just looking for somebody to take, to talk to. But on terms of the parenting side, parenting's not easy. I get it. I have a wonderful two-year-old daughter. I love her to death, but it's not easy to try to take care of her sometimes. Do the best you can. Sometimes you're going to get it right. Sometimes you get it wrong. Every child is different. Um, just to give you kind of a bit of an example with my personal experience, my daughter and I are technically Scorpios, but our personalities are vaguely different. I'm an introvert. She's an extrovert. She's a morning person. I'm a night owl. She is bubbly and cheerful. I'm more reserved and I like to be cautious where she is more gun ho So we are opposite. And yet we're supposed to be of the same sun sign. So every child is different. Every kid, and the sad thing is many parents can say, no kid comes with an instruction book. And you're having to guess sometimes. Do the best you can. Get to know them for who they are. Because you may be surprised by getting to know them a little bit better, you can find better ways to help them become a better person. Also, when you're overwhelmed, ask for help. Talk to neighbors, talk to friends that have kids, talk to some experts like your, the pediatri your child's pediatricians or other experts in the field that can help you when you feel like you're at your wit's end and unable to figure out how to reach your kids. I get it, it's not easy and you're gonna fail. Hence my next point, when you fail, apologize to your kids because you're gonna fail because you're a person, you're human, you're not perfect and give yourself some grace. Don't beat yourself up if you accidentally do a parent fail. I know I've done several parent fails and I'm pretty sure I probably will do more later on, but give yourself grace. You're, you're learning how to take care of your kid the best way you can. And it's going to look different from how your neighbor takes care of their kids from another person who takes care of their kids. It's going to look different because your lifestyle your environment, your personalities are going to be completely different from everybody else. So do the best you can. And last but not least, carpe diem. Many people believe that, oh, my life is affected because the stars are in a certain way. And actually it is not. You are the master of your fate. To quote a professor of mine, he said, you hold the pen to the story of your life. You can sign it off to make it something not worth even glancing at, or you can take the pen and make it an epic that everybody wants to read. Or to quote a friend of mine who's a Marine, he said, we're all dealt different cards in life. Some have a great hand, some have terrible hands. You can either fold and walk away from the table or you can play the heck out of the cards you have and walk away with some of the spoils. So carpe diem, seize the day, take hold of your life. Don't let what other people think are influence, saying that this is going to influence you, you take charge. I'll also here's some parenting resources. I know sometimes I'm having to guess of how to best take care of my own daughter. Here are some parenting resources I've looked towards for some ideas and tips on what to expect and how to take care of my own daughter as best as possible. So if you're looking for some nice resources to get some ideas and some expert advice, here are some resources. Nonetheless, if you have a question or a topic you would like for me to cover over, leave it down in the comments below. Also, if parents, if you're looking for something to educate your kids with and to provide them something fun for them to do while at home. There's a website called futurereadyessay.org, which allows your kids to do these fun activities while earning digital badges. So it kind of gamifies learning. In fact, I'll leave a link in the description below so that way you can check out the astronomy one, which is one of them that I've worked on personally, and you can check it out and have some fun with it. So until next time, Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, 
never stop learning. Have a great day, folks.